Kringle min checker. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, this webinar uh, on Horizon Europe. My name is Jero, and I'm going to be your host with my colleague Stefano, who can you can see in the screen. Um, uh, this webinar will be about the digital transformation for industry and process. But before going any further, I'd like to hear if, or at least read, if everything is going well. Can you please go to your chat on your on the right screen of your um, on the right of your screen and write some message here to say that you can hear us and everything works well on your side. I see Cyril who said good morning. So good morning. Can you please just type any of you type any things to let us know that we are live and everything is working well excellent thank you very much everyone so uh, welcome to this uh, webinar series so as i was saying um, lux innovation our job is currently to inform you about the next opportunities we are at the dawn of a new program Horizon Europe, Horizon 2020 finished uh, last year, so, and we are now on the first batch of, of calls. Um, so the idea of this webinar is to be in a series uh, of information sessions in relation with our event, launch event in December, but also to simply raise awareness among you and also note your interest for, for uh, the digital topics and the digital transformation topics today. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, if I go to the next slide. So for your information, um, you can see, because it's a webinar and we cannot meet face to face, you can see that on the right, square, right side of your screen, you have three tabs. Um, and I would like to ask you that just for discussing and saying that you can hear us or if you to mention if you have technical issue, please use the chat. If you have a questions uh, related to the topics that we're going to present it, please use the question tabs. This question tabs works a little bit like Slido if you want, so people can come and like uh, your questions and the questions with, with a more, more like will be on the top. So like this we can uh, easily interact with you afterwards. Uh, just a quick recap about who we are. Uh, so we are officially the national capital point for Horizon Europe, my colleague uh, Stefano and I. I'm in charge of the digital topics uh, and the security topics as well as the research infrastructure. Uh, maybe I can I ask Stefano if you can make a quick introduction uh, of yourself. I saw you turn off your camera, but I think yes. it would be great if you can introduce you. Hi. Yes, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, I work with Jero uh, in uh, the European funding team, uh, and uh, we cover, uh, yes, in, in cluster four of um, Horizon Europe, uh, I work more on the industrial side of things. And uh, also I cover, uh, yes, most of my time is spent uh, on uh, the EIC, the European Innovation Council. And for those of you interested, we are going to talk about it on the 18th. Thank so, you, thank Stefano. You. Yeah, back to you, Jero. Thank you, Stefano. So our job, as you can see here, is just basically to, to help you participating to Horizon Europe. And we have a bunch of services that are available for you, all for free, dedicated, of course, for the Luxembourg participant. And we know that some people from listening to, uh, to, you, to uh, listening us today are, are maybe not inside Luxembourg, but nevertheless, we are happy to share uh, some informations. And uh, so some of those services will be dedicated to Luxembourg organizations. Um, I would like to make a general disclaimer first from the start. Uh, at the moment, all the information that we have, all the draft, uh, all, all the information that we're going to present you are still under the draft, meaning that they haven't been approved neither by the Commission, neither by, the, by us as a member state. So, so uh, basically what you have to remember is that everything can still change. Of course, we are reaching now a point where there is a convergence of all the information and the and huge change are less and less likely nevertheless the negotiations are still going on so it might be definitely possible that everything can change it can be just the title of a topic it can be just the the 
the code of a topic. It can be a deadlines, it can be the content of the topic, the text itself, or even it can even be the cancellation of a topic or it's postponing to a later stage. So please keep in mind that what we're presenting you today is the information that as we have as for today. So if you, when you will be at the next step about building up uh, a proposal or starting working on the proposals, please come back to us to make sure that at least the topic that you are interested in hasn't changed too much. Um, so as I've been saying, this webinar series in, in, is in the continuation of our communication campaign regarding the first year of Horizon Europe. Um, most of you have maybe already um, uh, participated to our Horizon Europe launch event on the 1st of December last year. And I would like to make something clear, uh, or at least make a deal with, with you. Um, this webinar is a milestones uh, in the entire communication campaign, in the entire of our services. We have already addressed a lot of information, basic or advanced, in our past events. Uh, in everything is uh, reachable uh, in our webinars on our websites. You can so see the recordings, you can have access to the information. So the purpose of this webinar is not to restart from scratch or to give basic information. The, top, the purpose of this webinar is to go directly to the topics, and I'll come to that in a minute. This being said, I'd like to remind the three main advice that we have given to all proposers regarding uh, Horizon Europe, because we see the evolution with Horizon 2020. The first one is start early. And that also, uh, that also explains why we decided to make this webinar, despite the fact that we are still in draft, is because we're looking at what the deadlines are looking like at the moment. We know that some of those topics that we're going to present you need long preparation ahead. And we know from some specific thematics or some even some cluster that the ecosystem at EU level participating to those topics have already started building proposals. Some have, have even said that they are closed their consortium already. So that's why we want to bring your, your awareness, we want to raise your awareness regarding those topics today because we see, despite the fact that they are still draft, we see the community at European level getting ready for the first calls and we want to get you also ready. So first advice, start early. Second advice, network. Um, Looking at the evolution from Horizon 2020, the necessity to be in touch with the ecosystem, the current initiatives, the, the different uh, portfolios of projects already existing is critical. The Commission doesn't want any more, too much, or this has become very exceptional, I should say, free electron in the thematics that we're going to discuss today. So the, the project that you're going to, if you want, if you are interested in one of the topics we're going to present today, the project you will build will have to be in co collaboration with other projects, always structuring initiatives at EU level. And again, some of the those ecosystems have already started working on those projects. So plugging you with those people or with those organizations is critical today for ensuring a successful participation. So network and network good. That was the second advice we give beginning of December. The third and last advice that we want to give you is you need to broaden your horizon. Um, as we have seen uh, in our previous draft, there is um, a coherence in the entire work programs, which is uh, making the identifications of the opportunities quite challenging from a participant perspective. Therefore, the perfect opportunity for you might not be inside the topics that we have, we're going to describe today, but might be in a different place in Horizon Europe or even in a different program, uh, which is linked to Horizon Europe, but which is not Horizon Europe. The Digital European Program, a joint undertaking like uh, the new Excel or um, Euro HPC or even maybe the connecting European facilities. We're going to come back to that in, a, in, a, in, in the next slide, but you need to broaden your horizon. That's the third advice we gave you. To give you a glimpse justly about this, this coherence, um, if we look at just the structure uh, you have here in the pictures, the different layers, the different uh, lasagne, as I call it, 
bit from the policies of Horizon Europe toward the topics. And if we look at just the cluster four here, we can see that there are actually 109 topics in the war programs with 442 pages. So it's quite a lot. And if you look at the synergies which the commissioner has put at the heart of Horizon Europe, then you need to look at maybe doing digital transformation for health might not be in these specific topics, but might be somewhere else. Um, that was just an example. So as a kind reminder, remember that there is a layer, uh, a lasagna in terms, of, uh, in terms of coherence, but this coherence is from the commission point of view. From your point of view, you need to broaden your horizon. Finally, what we're gonna discuss during this uh, webinar today is the cluster four. And in the cluster four, what you need to remember is that there are six destinations. So see the destination, they are like sub-chapter, -chap, sub sorry. Um, and the topics that we're actually gonna uh, describe today in the next slides will be kind of distributed among the different uh, among the different destinations. You're gonna see them appearing uh, as also subchapter of the presentations. Just remember, uh, you have here a presentation of the timelines regarding the topics for the cluster four, uh, which are spreading over two years. And what you need to remember is that the first deadlines will arrive mid-July and you will have uh, some sort of um, a concentrations of deadlines between the 31st of August and the 29th of September. Uh, that represents 108 topic in 2021. And as a basic for today, we're gonna focus only on the topic of 2021. Of course, we won't address the 108 topic. We will address only the topics that are in relation, more or less, and I'll come to that in a minute, only the topics that are in relation with the digital transformation for industry and processes. So be aware that there are some other topics. When you will receive the draft, you will find new topics that will, but, but that will be in 2022. The mobilization for those topics can be done further uh, later in the year. At the moment, what is urgent in terms of, of timeline is getting ready for the topics from between 15th of July to 29th of September. So let's make a deal, all of you and us. The deal for uh, this webinar, we're gonna talk only on the, of the topics of 2021. We're gonna focus only on the cluster four topics. There are a series of past webinars that actually we have some topics that might be relevant have already been addressed. So to make it coherent, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna mention them, but we're not gonna go deep in this, in this presentation. We are gonna send you back to what those other webinars. Uh, and also, don't forget that we have make uh, advanced sessions regarding Horizon Europe, advanced training sessions at the beginning of December. So we need you to get in touch uh, to, with those links. And I see a question about, is it possible to have the links to the events? Actually, when you will receive the slide, you can see that the, those webinars are, the, the links are already inside the presentation. So you can just come and click on them. Um, of course, only the links of the past events, the future event, for example, in two days, we're gonna have a webinar about artificial intelligence topics. You will not have this, but I invite you just to register then to webinar of 11 of February. Also, as a baseline for our common understanding for this training, we're not gonna address the coordination and support actions. We might mention them here and there because it might be relevant for you, but uh, basically we want to focus on the topics where uh, technic technical topics, if you allow me the expression, but when you can advance the research and your innovation. That's our understanding. That's what we propose you for this webinar now. Um, general tape cups um, from, the from the glimpse of the cluster four. You have to remember that the topics, specifically in the digital sections, are extremely wide. Basically, it's very hard to identify in some topics what the commission is actually not calling for. So that means that uh, the technologies or the ways is actually not the main driving force of this topic. The impact is, but the way to reach this impact is kind of left up to you. 
And for this, I have an example that I've taken from another group that I've attended once. It's like if you have a cities and today it takes one hour to cross the cities. What the commission will tell you is that as an impact, they want to reduce the time for crossing from one hour to 10 minutes. That's the impact the commission wants to see. And the, that's what you're going to read in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a draft. However, the commission doesn't say at all how. And that is left to you. So basically, if you want to build a faster car, if you want to build a tunnel, a bridge, if you want to build a catapult to throw yourself from the other side of the, of the city in less than 10 minutes, it's working. It fits the scope of the topics. But it's really up to you to decide it. And keep this example in, in the top of your head because you're going to see for some topics, basically, you are free to do whatever you want to some extent. But what is more relevant is what's the impact. So we're going to address two in two ways the topics today. The first one, when we have identified this as a core topic, as one topic important for, this, for the title of this webinar, digital transformation for industry and process. We're going to take one or two minutes to, to address it, to present it to you. If it's a topic which or has already been addressed by a previous uh, or by another webinar, or which is um, second priority, it's linked with but not so much focus on, then we're just going to refer it to the draft. We're gonna, you're going to see the list. We're going to see some basic information, but we're not going to spend too much time to address it. Also, last point, um, everything related to space, which is also part of this cluster four, uh, you will have to contact my colleagues, Charles Kuhner from the Luxembourg Space Agencies, because it has been agreed that we will not be addressing those topics ourselves. Um, it's, uh, can, it seems to be putting a lot of limitations, but actually it's to make this webinar not lasting four hours. You're going to be you're going to be uh, uh, you're going to be dead after we're going to talk. So uh, I'm asking you uh, to get ready for his water, coffee, and get ready for um, for it because we're going to start uh, just in one more slide. Because what I want to make sure that you understand that today we scratch the surface. We will not go in details or in deep of each topics. First, because they're going to change. Huh? They're still in draft. So we maybe focusing on the content might be too, too deep, deep. But also it's because we need your help. We need your help at one moment because we need you to go and read those topics. So the purpose of this webinar is that you're going to have a mapping of the topics related to digital transformation for industry and process. List them. Tell us if, uh, and then come back to, to us and tell us if those topics have your interest, and then we can have a more customized services. We will not be able to offer uh, a basic general uh, services on in-depth analysis of the topics. That will depend on you. So we're going to have 90 topics which are going to be seen uh, for one or two minutes, and we're going to have 17 topics which are going to be listed just quickly. So get your coffee. Get your water, and now I give the floor to my colleague Stefano for the destination destination one. Yes, thanks, thanks a lot, Jero. Actually, I really like your comment on uh, the on the impact that you have to achieve instead of uh, how you're going to achieve it, because uh, you will see in uh, in a few slides a very concrete example of that, and uh, on a quantitative uh, on a quantitative impact, which is called. And uh, for that, it's something that uh, we, we was introduced uh, in Horizon 2020, half of Horizon 2020, to be very precise on quantitative impact. But also, uh, when you are asked to, to address a quantitative impact, to consider what's the baseline. Because the most important thing is when you consider a quantitative impact, is the baseline that you want to have. Because if you don't define clearly the baseline, baseline you are not clear in what, in what you're bringing. So it's, remember, whenever you see a quantitative impact, uh, like you want to be in the other side of the city in uh, 10 minutes compared to one hour, what's this uh, one hour? Uh, what this one hour consider? Is it from when I start dressing and then I get out? Or is it from the moment I step out of my door? Be very precise on that. It's a very concrete advice for your proposals in the future. So yes, I'll start with destination one. 
Uh, destination one is about climate neutral, circular, and digitized production. It's a very nice example on uh, the twin transition. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly, because we will have a lot of slides to then. So uh, don't kill, don't shoot us. It's um, uh, but yes, it's about uh, something which is very inside the twin transition: digital and climate neutral, uh, digital and the green deal. It's uh, we are we want to transform our industries to make them not just digital because it's fancy, it's fancy, but because we want them to be more efficient and greener. So this is basically the aim of destination one. Uh, destination one. We will go through some some of the topics in destination one. Uh, some of them are not new. Some of them are follow-ups on um, on previous topics. Uh, I will mention that. Uh, I will focus more much more on the partnerships that are behind this, these topics because that's the most, most important information. The rest, you can read it. Uh, we, left the, we left the title, we left the, the new fancy code that the Commission has invented for finding your topics uh, on, the, on the World Programme and or the Funding and Tenders portal. So when they are going to be available there, you will find it pretty easily if you are able to remember this uh, Horizon Horizon CL4 2021 Twin Transition 0102. Not easy to remember, but at least it's uh, universe, let's say. So let's start with the first topic that we want to present you in uh, uh, cluster four, destination one. And it's about zero, def zero, zero defect manufacturing. Nothing new. And in fact, it is an innovation action. Uh, it, builds some, it builds upon topics uh, uh, running in uh, factories of the future in 2018, 2016. So now these projects are considered mature for going from a research innovation action to an innovation action, to start from TRL5 and to reach TRL7. There's uh, a pretty substantial budget for this topic, which is about uh, 27.5 million for two free top three projects depending on the size of each commission expects eight to 12 million for each project the most important thing is that zero defect manufacturing is performed in a way that you're first you're not uh, you're not having defects but you also develop the non uh, the, 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 the diagnostic tools to basically see how things are going and uh, to avoid uh, uh, unnecessary waste of materials. So also to, re to define repair strategy, production, but also recycling if, if things are not going as you wish. Another very similar topic to something that happened in the past. Uh, here it's uh, a bit, still a bit uh, lower TRL. It's about laser-based manufacturing because it's going towards green manufacturing. This has been done mostly Again, in FOF, in Factory of the Future, in EFRA. Now, the, uh, the new partnership is called Made in Europe, but basically it's the same people as EFRA, it's the same uh, structures that were in EFRA. And in fact, uh, I think that the website is also, it's also staying the same. Uh, so, but yes, look at now the code word for manufacturing, advanced manufacturing is Made in Europe. It's built upon on things that have been done in 2016 about laser manufacturing, but moving to green materials also. And in fact, the technology readiness level is three to, from three to four up to six at the end of the project. Same budget, uh, same total budget from before, but a slightly lower project size, because yes, probably you don't need to have pilot lines in this as you're going for a, a research innovation action, 100% funded. Uh, most important here is the, what I told you before, the example of the baseline. Here you have a baseline defined, a uh, 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 quantitative impact, so it's very important to think about the baseline. A uh, horizontal aspect that you need to consider, and this is uh, what is giving you the, the, the extra bit uh, that is making your project green compared to the others, is that you address efficiently the standardization. So when you, when you build your proposal on this topic, think about involving the standardization agency, if you want, uh, in illness in Luxembourg or some, some, someone, someone else from other countries. 
data sharing is very important. And uh, for this, uh, remember to consider other initiatives, other very similar initiatives on, the, on, the, on data. Uh, industry commons that you will see later in, um, in my slides. The ICT 13 topics uh, from projects from uh, 2020, 10, 2020, Gerald? 20, oh, no, 2018, right? Yes, 2018. Yes, the ICT topics for basically creating the data markets. So refer to what's been done in the past, refer to what's done by others. So you're sure that you're not reinventing the wheel when you're addressing things that have been already done. Uh, I told you in the previous topic about green materials. Again, we, we have another research innovation action here on bio-based materials. This is uh, something which is coming mostly from uh, uh, the Manu Future uh, roadmaps. And, uh, and, it, it's, and it's indeed uh, trying to um, bring biomaterials into smart manufacturing. Uh, again, it's a research innovation action, so you don't need the pilot lines probably, and therefore the budget is lower, uh, the project size is lower, four to six million. Roughly five projects to be funded with the total budget of 20 million as we have here. Here at four to six. Uh, what's uh, a very important aspect you can read uh, when you receive the slides, when you receive when you receive the recording, you can read what is written here. What I wanted to point out is the importance of developing business models for material sources and recycling. So it's uh, the business case that you had to develop in uh, in, in in past NMDP project. It stays here. You have to be credible on how you are going to export things on the market in the future. This is something that is rather common in Horizon in Horizon Europe. It's yeah, try to bring things to the market, not just staying into the labs. Yes, here an innovation action instead. Uh, whoop. Ah, yes, <laughs> I, I, I realized that I, uh, the duplica duplication of slide uh, left something behind here. I will change it for the I, I will change it for the um, uh, for the slide that we sent we sent to you. It's about data driven distributed industrial environment. Here we have an innovation action, higher TRL five to seven, total budget uh, for the call twenty two point five million and the project size for two eight million because you have a commission to be enough for this topic. Uh, this, the aim of this project, of this call, is to have Europe as a leader in sustainable data driven manufacture. Uh, this is, yes, to make European industry more agile. Uh, and very important, uh, the uh, contribution of 5G networks in here. So, yes, it's a more digital topic. For this, uh, I advise you to get in touch with Jerome, who is the, uh, the expert also on who to get in touch with for, for this topic. Jerome, if you want to say something on this. I, I just want to say uh, that we have addressed this topic at our webinar on the 4th of, of February. So if okay. you are more interested in a discussion on this, you can also refer to this webinar. But thanks, Stefano, for mentioning it. Yeah, great. And uh, yes. Uh, Let's go to something uh, a bit different, and uh, because sometimes you think uh, that uh, smart manufacturing is all just happening into the fancy, the fancy new factories that uh, you know the big automotive makers are making, uh, or uh, you know Huskies done in in, in uh, Delange, you know this kind of things. But eventually, uh, there's a strong effort in the Commission to digitize uh, to digitize and innovate other uh, industrial sectors and the the, the, the buildings the building uh, the construction sector is uh, a major example there's indeed a strong effort of digitalize the building the, the construction sector which starts from last year probably we had a very important initiative uh, with the call for digital build, digital building twins for optimizing the uh, the construction sector uh, the there's the list has uh, done a project has coordinated a project in this area with regard to the logistics of the of the construction sector. So it's uh, something which is done into the energy into the ECTP uh, technology platform. 
And basically here, what the Commission is calling for is to uh, have uh, the, uh, the digitalization of the compliance part of, uh, the, uh, of the construction. So all the legal compliance can be digitized in order to have a uh, uh, more efficient planning. So you don't have to rely on paper anymore. And uh, we are, they are calling here for rather small project, let's say 5 million euros in total, with a total budget of 50 million euros. And uh, since there are already some digitization initiatives, uh, they are calling from a higher tier end from five to seven. There are comp software makers who are already active in this field. Um, very important is something that is hitting the news in this moment uh, is the new Bau European Bauhaus. So about social housing, uh, creative social housing, creative initiatives to, to uh, improve the construction sector also from the social perspective, not just from the technological. So this double layer of innovation. Uh, there will be, and there are other topics for sure in the uh, digital sector, in the construction sector, but I want to move forward to another important area, which is the uh, hubs for circularity. Hubs for circularity, they have been developed within SPIRE, the technology, but the, the, the CPPP SPIRE in Horizon 2020. Uh, now SPIRE has changed the name, it's called Processes for Planets, but they haven't changed their website. It's still spire2030.org, if I remember correct. So you can still find the information, all the information there, because the association is always the same, managing this public private partnership. The keyword here is hubs for circularity. The hubs for circularity are geographically limited areas, let's say 25 kilometers in radius, where you have initiatives towards zero waste to landfill, industrial symbiosis, and uh, mixed industrial symbiosis, industrial urban symbiosis. So the first topic that you see here in, in this area is uh, about uh, industrial urban symbiosis. They use the mixed use of wasted energy for residential use also. The more efficient uh, system for water filtration and purification, very important, zero, zero waste to landfill. You have to define circular routes for everything that goes in and that goes into the, the hub. Very, very important. The digital platform as an enabler. You can't do a hub for, a hub for circularity without the digital platform enabling it. And uh, standardization and regulation are to be addressed as well, because they want first to have diffusion of this system towards other, other places, but also to, to do it in a regulatory friendly way. There are other topics for that. I linked them, I just mentioned them here in the back of the slides. As you can expect, this, this project will be rather large, eight to 12 million. Uh, so hopefully there will be budget for free, but uh, I expect more likely budget for two projects to be funded, which are rather low technology readiness level still, because we are at the beginning of this field. And, uh, still linked to, to Spire, to what Spire has been doing in the past uh, on large uh, model, on modernization of large industrial infrastructure from an energy uh, optimization perspective. This topic, which is completely in line, very big projects because you have to be, you have, you need to have a very large demonstration, demonstrators for that. It's about energy flexible industrial processes. So you have to basically incorporate in the production side energy storage and energy conversion, and to have digital tools mapping and to understanding how the energy is used and how you can more flexibly use this energy and be less reliant on the grid. And this is for large uh, consumers of uh, uh, energy, uh, large en uh, energy companies consuming large quantities of energy. Uh, and it's, yes linked to the, this is, a, uh, let's say, Aspire project, uh, Processes for Planets project. Process project. Uh, it's linked to, I wanted to link here a steel project, which is related to the uh, energy transition in the uh, steel making plants. 
it's not because that topic is very much digital in in uh, in its aspect it's not, it's not about very much digital transformation it's more about energy transformation it's about use of hydrogen and, and biogases the important thing is that uh, it's the link for me to uh, tell you about the clean steel partnership which is another big player that you need to consider it's a new cppp that you have to uh, remember to take into consideration if you're going to develop projects in the steel sector i now move to destination two i've seen two questions in the happening uh Giro, uh we take them at the end right yeah i'm actually on it starting to reply oh, to some of them great thank you, thank you but uh, before you start destination two how are you all going on can you please write on the chat how is it going um yes we know it's we know it's heavy so <laughs> please uh re interact a little bit with us are you still alive how do you feel do you are you happy do you like the snow outside or you're wondering what the hell is going on here just just react with us thank you go ahead, back to you stefano Thanks, Rosa, Alex, and, uh, and Darren. Great, great to hear from you. Uh, yes, we go ahead into destination two. Destination two is uh, resilient value chains. Uh, resilient value chains, uh, and uh, this is, I think that the name of destination two changed uh, substantially after the COVID crisis. So um, let's go into the few topics that we have selected from destination two. Something that I mentioned earlier uh, in this industry commons. Industry commons is about data from reuse of, the, of industrial data. And basically, it comes from two councils that the Commission has promoted the European Materials Modeling Council and the European Material Characterization Council. The idea that they have the, these two councils have developed together is that you need to have ontologies. Ontologies to be sure that all your data are reusable by someone else. If you want to reuse data for modeling, you need to have data in a common a format that is basically uh, common to everyone. The, if, you, if you are characterizing materials, you want to put the data that you obtain for your characterization into this common format. So these two councils have worked together and come with this uh, idea of uh, industry commons. And therefore, here the topic. It's uh, small projects because it's uh, uh, you don't have uh, infrastructure to build or fancy equipment to buy, but uh, it's very important. There's a partially linked topic into but the biomaterial sector. Biomaterial uh, have um, followed this uh, very similar path to nanomaterials with a two years delay, let's say in Horizon 2020. The aim of uh, what the Commission is trying to build in parallel for nanomaterial and this will go into the direction of industry common for biomaterials as well, is to have databases of biomaterials to be built and to have common databases for everyone to uh, put their biomaterials with a sort of unique ontology. Uh, yes, this is uh, a strange topic, I have to admit. Uh, first, because it's an innovation action, but we don't have it here. Right? And second, because uh, it's uh, somehow very similar to what is done outside cluster four in something that uh, I do for the most the most of my time, which is about the uh, innovative Europe pillar of uh, Horizon or Horizon Europe itself, and it's about innovation ecosystem. Here, what the Commission wants is to try to have uh, uh, services to uh, SMEs, uh, uh, supporting the sustainability transition and the resilience of, S of SMEs into the industrial technology area. So it's a small niche of, of uh, SMEs, not like, the, not like for everyone that we have in, uh, uh, in Pillar 3. So it's, uh, you have uh, all, these pot all these actors that you, need to that you need to consider when you want to participate in that. It's EN, the clusters, uh, the, the Open Innovation Testbeds, the DIH, uh, Startup Europe Initiative. Basically, it's to develop advisory service and cascading grants as innovation vouchers. It's not probably very important for applicants. It's much more important for innovation ecosystem players but have a look at what's happening here because you may have tools to basically access funding 
and the, and then uh, improve SMEs towards resilience and sustainability. Another real topic, because it's a bit out of where you expect it, it's about uh, a social. Um, uh, it's about uh, a social uh, affordable housing district demonstrator. It's uh, once it's basically like a prize. What, 10 million projects for 10 million budget. You have the best one, you win. Basically, is to create a lighthouse district where you have a smart neighborhood approach. You have uh, all the possible improvements uh, from uh, uh, industry, urban industrial symbiosis, bio approaches, uh, all the things that you want to have now in a lighthouse district for, uh, for social and green housing. With uh, yes, with also a very important social layer of co-design. So it's a very nice project, a very complex project, um, and we will be happy to work with you if, on this if you're interested. It's I think it's very very important for the industry for the construction sector in Luxembourg. And uh, I leave to Jerome the floor to finish destination two because we have a PCP project and Jerome. Uh, has a uh, better knowledge than me on this, and I give it for him. And uh, yes, we see into the chat question, into the chat or question section, and at the end for a, a QA. See you soon. Okay, thank you. Um, before we make uh, some sort of a small breaks between destination, I have to address one topic which is actually even weirder than the topic that was addressed before by Stefano. Um, so, this topic it's called a pre commercial procurement. What does it mean? That means that the, what the Commission wants to do here is not to make a techno push, but a techno pull. But traductions, it means that uh, the Commission wants to support the end users. And when the Commission end users, it mainly I here understand uh, public authorities, hospitals, uh, um, associations, or organizations that need to, call, to launch call for tenders. So the Commission wants to support those people to adopt uh, innovative solutions, but at the same time help shaping those innovative solutions. So it's not exactly co-design. It's something different here. You don't participate as end users. You participate as a common group of buyer at EU level. So imagine you are in hospitals and there are 10 hospitals in Europe that needs the same innovative solution that does not exist on the market yet. Well, those 10 groups can come together inside this PCP project and then launch a call for tender for an innovative solution and encourage the people to reply to this, uh, to this call for tender with the understanding that the solution still needs to be developed or to be improved. So you might have a prototype, but you might have, uh, you might still need to do some innovation things. So. It's a weird topic in a sense that most of it, it does not address or it's not a topic for uh, people like RTOs or for uh, industries that are developing innovations. It's a topic for the end users. So basically my advice here is that if you think this topic is interesting for you, just get in touch with us because it's, it needs a specific approach. But if you are a techno supplier or a service supplier, just forget this topic. It's not for you. It's not addressed for you. What should be the innovative solution called for in this topic? So if you are one of those end users, well, basically, it's any green or digital solutions that can help you uh, to improve your resilience or your preparedness for circular economy and climate change. So you see, it's very, very broad. It can be uh, industrial or it can be digital. And it's really to adopt the solution. And what is even more interesting in this is that you will, uh, in technically, the, the organization will launch a call for tender for the solution and then will buy the, the, the solution. Here, the commission supports you in the buying, in the purchase, because a part of the, a part of the bills you will receive will be taken charge by the, Euro by the European Commission. So, this topic is like you will have your 10 hospitals that will have the same 
techni technological solution. So interoperability at EU level is ensured. And the Commission has helped you to buy this innovative solution. So it improved uh, your competitiveness or it's improved your readiness for market take up. So, I close the, 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 the discussion on this topic because it's very well. If you are interested, just contact me because the legal aspect of this topic is very spe specific. If you are a techno supplier, again, this topic is not for you, but it might be interesting for your uh, customers. So if you are in, in discussions with a public authority, an hospital, or even a buyer, a group of buyers, well, you might want to mention this topic to them. If you want, just come back to me. All right. That was the last topic in destination two. We still have three destinations to go. What I suggest is that we just take one minute for drinking and for relaxing a little bit. Look outside the windows and maybe I'm going to ask you for what can you please write in the chat? What do you see through your windows? Like this is going to also help us to relax a little bit uh, and not be always glued to our screen. So please. I'm calling for you. Would you be please be so kind to describe what do you see in your from your windows? I see some people are still writing. I'm going to give you like, a, like something like 10, 20 more snow. A second, I see that you, a lot of people see snow, which is nice, I think. Anyway, beauties of teleworking. A big truck is delivering a jacuzzi to the neighbors. Interesting. Can we, <laughs> can, we go to the, can we go to the neighbors? Because a jacuzzi is always nice, speci specifically under the snow. Thank you, Pierre-Yves. Uh, we just need the address. <laughs> All right, let's, let's slowly restart. Thank you very much for interacting with us. We, it's a pity we are in a webinar, but we, we, we wish so much to interact with you. So destination three is about world leading data and computing uh, technologies. And as you can understand, this is actually the focus of this destination is not exactly on the applications. So it's not exactly on the industry and processes, but the, 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 the principle of this destination is very focusing the hardcore on the data value chain at the center of the data. So everything which is about data management, the process, um, uh, the storage, the, the discovery, but transversal, meaning that it does not address only industry and processes. So as you can understand, this is just a destination where the topics are second priority level. So basically, you will have some topics which uh, are may be useful for you because those topics will need industrial test bed. And you have the two first here. But the core activity of those topics is not on industry and processes. So they are usually low TRL. And only if you are interested in advanced test testing or advanced validator, being an advanced validator for those things, um, that only that would be a place where you can you, you can address. So there is a one for about which is about technology and solutions for privacy preserving uh, data operations. So here it's kind of making everything uh, digital technology for EU embedded va EU values embedded inside our data operation. Something which is quite interesting in this uh, in this topic is that they mentioned about the in as a um, how do they call it already um, the green aspect of the data operations. So having uh, um, having the data operation processes, technology and solution, which are compliance with some green uh, aspects, trying to reduce the energy consumptions, trying to preserve uh, to have a sustainable approach. The second topic is technology for data management. It's broad. It's very, very, very broad. But what you need to develop here is transversal uh, technology for data management that can be applied to different industries. So if you are interested in this, everything which is about industry and process can be one of the test bed. 
as I said at the beginning of my introduction, I'm not going to dwell too much in those to when the topics are not the core one for this webinar. Another one is about uh, everything which is about data analytic and capacity. And here we talk about extreme data mining. This is quite interesting if you are want to use HPC resources. Um, when the commission talks about extreme, it means extreme in uh, not in terms only on volume, but also in heterogeneous aspect, in format, unformat data. Um, and what this topic needs is industrial validations. So if you are interested in, in such a large approach, in the, a powerful uh, IT infrastructures for your application, this is where you can come and test it. Uh, another topic is about trying to bring the intelligence toward the age of the network. So here it's having from uh, a European platform for the for everything which is related to meta operating system. So trying to bring the intelligence, the computing and etc. to the edge of your network. So if you are in a very large uh, industrial um, manufacturing lines, for example, and you want to have a lot of IoT device sensor for measuring, uh, measuring your, your, the maintenance of, of, your, um, of your manufacturing line. This can be interesting for you. And that's actually close for the destination three. I'm going to go to the destination four, where we might have better, we, we, there will be more interesting topics uh, where digital transformation for industry and process will be at the core. So destination four is about everything which is about digital and emerging technologies. Um, when the commission talks about emerging technologies, it, it, it understood uh, mainly about uh, what was previously the FET and more specifically the FET topics. So it addressed quantum, graphene, etc. But this destination is not only that. It includes also everything which is about data, uh, AI, sorry, artificial intelligence and robotics. And that's the topics I want to mention to you today. So the first one topic is about um, everything which is AI, data, and robotics for the Green Deal. Here, the commission is calling for any kind of solutions in those three brand of technologies, huh? AI, data, or robotics, any kind of solution that can support the optimizations and the minimization of waste in any sector. So it's address a Green Deal objectives, waste reductions, using digital technologies. Data is at the heart of this, this, of these topics. So you must be able to have a data-based optimization of the, of the waste reductions. And the commission is, does, is not calling for uh, the development of uh, from low TRL here. It's more high TRL. So you have to think in terms of integration and optimization of different technology already existing. If you are an industry, what is interesting is that those, those solutions must be validated. So they must have industry and end users. If you are interested in this topic, my advice is that you need to get to network with the right people for this because it doesn't start from scratch, this, this, this topic. And here, the best place is the new AI PPP, which is basically the, the, the merging of the two associations, BDVA, Big Data Value Associations, and EU Robotics. I'm making a bracket here. BDVA and EU Robotics are the two, so, uh, two associations at EU levels uh, kind of structuring the ecosystem around everything which is data and robotics. And you're going to hear them a lot in my slides. So if you are interested in any of the topics I'm going to mention from now, you can be sure that you will. Um, one of my advice will be to get in touch with those people. I close the bracket. The second topic, which is about uh, this time AI, data, and robotic at work. Uh, so what is interesting is that it's, they are demonstration project. Here you have to demonstrate in the, in the project how AI, data, or robotics technologies can support workers, so basically us, you, me, Stefano, uh, the one who just passed my door here, all those technologies can help us in our daily task. It's a kind of a bit complicated topics because there are actually subtopics in it, 
And you can see on the top right, I have inserted these pictures of a, of a, of a cascade, of a waterfall. Uh, that means that actually it's a topic that will be addressing also um, cascading grounds, meaning that you might have, if you are an end user, you might be interested to just participate to the future cascading grants. There are smaller amount of, build of money that can come from the project for adopting the technologies that has been pushed. So here, AI data and robotics technologies that has been developed in the first phase of the project to insert them in your own business. I'm not going to dwell too much about what is a cascading grant because we have addressed that in a previous webinar, but each time you see this little uh, waterfall on the top screen, that means that this topic is calling for cascading grants. The next topic is about robotics. And here we're talking about low tier rail, uh, sorry, um, low tier rail, but I, uh, core, uh, core module for robotics. The commission wants to push the limits of robotics. So it's thinking about the new generation of robots. And here there is, there is, um, there is robotics embedded with AI. And that's what the commission wants to do. There are two subtopics, or at least two, uh, two areas to address. Smarter robots for improved and more complex capabilities. So here it's uh, being able to address and handle more complex uh, uh, activities or functions. The second area is about human-robot collaborations and how to ensure an efficient, trustworthy, underline this word is quite fair, a trustworthy collaboration between human and robots in the workspace. Um, you have, will have to address everything which is about cognitive abilities of robots. And here, all the project can focus on a higher level of autonomy for the robots or you can focus on the human-machine collaboration. And what is interesting in this, uh, for, for you listening to this webinar, the, each project must have at least three industrial use cases. So you can be one of those use cases. I go to the next topic, which is about European Network of Excellence Center in Robotics. Here, it's maybe, uh, it's only would be interesting for you if you are developing robots. So basically what the commission wants to do here, it's structure the ecosystem at EU level to make a collaboration between the different network, uh, the different uh, competence centers in robotics. It's kind of a, a digital innovation hubs for robotics at EU level, what I call the pan-EUDH, uh, but it's really to push uh, the robotics deployment. It's lower TRL, and if you're interested in this, well, you should know that this is not a new topic, so there you should get familiar with what is exists already existing, but you must definitely get in touch with EU Robotics. Don't start from scratch. I go to the next one. So the next topic is about a development of technologies and device for bio-intelligence manufacturing. This is kind of a brand new topic, at least it's new in the higher TRL. It was addressed in the previous topics more at very low TRL for the future and emerging technologies. So what the commission wants to do here is to um, encourage the biological transformation of industry using biointelligence manufacturing. And when the commission said biointelligence, actually the topic is listing what it, some example of what is biointelligence. And I've kind of write them here for you. There is biomimicry, so try to mimic the nature. Um, but that can be also the integration of biological principles or interface with nature-based solutions. Um, there is kind of a focus on the data aspect of this, data processing, digital twins, and AI. But basically, the, this topic is for manufacturing environments who wants to integrate in their processes or in their manufacturing, everything which is ba nature-based solutions. It's quite an ambitious project. It's quite an ambitious topic. And if you're interested, I can just say, first, look at what has been done before in the FED project. We have some good example and we can address them with you. But you will need to get address or to get in touch with uh, EFRA, which is the Association for the Factories of the Futures at EU level. And indeed, Jerome, Jerome yes. I, just, I just linked an article from the Fraunhofer because, they, as, as you mentioned, EFRA, within EFRA, within Manufuture, the Fraunhofer is the one which is pushing most, pushing, pushing more for, uh, for this topic. 
Thank you for the precision, uh, Stefano. I'm going to address now in the destination for other topics that are less core for uh, this webinar. So you have them here. It's more uh, addressing component systems, so more microelectronics or or um, cloud computing power uh, software uh, or the processors. Uh, they will need they will need um, industrial applications, but that might not be of your core interest here. Just you have them here. If you are more interested in it, we can have a, an individual discussions afterwards. I'm going to continue. There is another topic about functional electronics for green and circular economy. It's kind of a continuity. This topic is kind of called every year, which is about flexible uh, tolai. It's called uh, flexible print and organic electronics. And then there is all the topics which are about photonics. And I must admit that those photo the photonics topics are more addressed in terms of communication. So how to use the component of photonics for communications. That's one topic. The other topic is about how photonics can be used for uh, industrial applications. That's close to destination four. I'm going to quickly open the destination five for actually closing it immediately because destination five is about the space technologies. And as I've been introduced to you, space is not in our portfolio at Lux Innovation. It's a portfolio of the Luxembourg space agencies. So for any topic in related to space technologies, I'm going to ask you to go in and get in touch with my colleague Charles Kuners from the Luxembourg space agencies. That also allow us to not spend to, uh, to make a too long uh, webinar. He will also make a webinar about the space technologies and the space topic inside Cluster 4. I must admit, I don't remember from the top of my head when, but uh, you, if you follow our newsletter, you will, you will see it. I go now to the destination 6, which is a, a human-centered and ethical development of digital and industrial technologies. Here, we are more addressing, in a broader context, we are more addressing the technology for the internet, so more the software layer, although not only, you're going to see it. But for those of you who are familiar with past, uh, past initiatives, this is quite in relation with the next generation internet. So the, the initiative that tried to build a EU value embedded inter infra internet infrastructure. Let's, let's dive. The first topic that I would like to address for you, which is in kind of digital transformation for industry and processes, is a topic which is about extended reality. So augmented reality and virtual reality. But basically what the commission wants to, to create, because we are now in a webinar and because of COVID-19, etc., etc., they want to, the commission wants to uh, de support the, the development and the deployment of solutions for collaborative telepresence. So it's a techno push topics, and it can address any technologies, any digital technologies for this. It can be bandwidths, compressions, uh, how to, we, we are, we are around, we were around 20 people in this webinar, but what happened if we want to be two silence? Um, text, speech, audio, but also augmented and virtual reality, 3D, holography, how, how, how to have an holograms in a meeting for the future telepresence. You have some technologies that are already existing, mainly US, Chinese, or Japanese based. So the, what the commission wants is to develop the EU, uh, the EU technologies with ethics, privacy, security, and safety embedded in it. Um, those projects must have industrial take-ups. So that may be interesting for you if you want to be a test bed for this kind of so those kind of solutions. The second topic that I want to uh, use here is art-driven use experiment and design. So here, what the commission wants to do is to merge different uh, stakeholders, multidisciplinary aspect, the art and the technology together for encouraging the uptakes of the technologies. So here, what the commission wants to support is a collaboration between industry and artists in re uh, research and development project. And when the commission say artist, it's any type of artist. It's very, there is no definition or there is no limitation. The topic is focusing on the list of industries that I've, 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 li I've listed here. Green in bracket manufacturing, mobility, 
urbanism, health, agriculture, and space. And this is not a new topic. This is not something that the commission is starting the new. This has been already done in other projects in the past, and there is actually one topic, uh, one project running, which is called the START project. And I invite you, if you are interested in, in doing multidisciplinary approach, to have a look at this one. I move to the next one, which is about workforce skills for industry. So here, basically, the commission wants, it's not exactly um, uh, a technological development, but the commission wants to e make it easier for industry uh, to upskill their workforce. And they want to make, to make an analysis about what will be the transformation of the job uh, in the coming years. You will see uh, for industry 5.0. So I know that we are already talking about industry 4.0, and for some of you, it might still be a process uh, ongoing, but the commission is already, already thinking about industry 5.0, so mass customizations uh, and uh, mass digital involvement uh, for in the manufacturing aspect, and wants to get guidance and guidelines and recommendations for any sectors Manufacturing, of course, because it should be industry 5 pound, but for all type of organizations. So small, big, large, uh, medium company, the commission wants to have uh, this kind of guidance and recommendations. If you are interested in doing this, if you, uh, this, is, this topic is interesting if you want to influence the future of the development of the digital skills. So basically, what would be the courses, what would be the trainings available, what should be the, top, the technology addressing. It should include the social science and humanities, of course, but mainly it is very related to another program, which is called the Digital European Programs. I'll come to that in a moment, but which has an entire pillar addressing the digital skills. So just be aware that this is existing. Now I go to quickly to some other topics that would be interesting for you. So there is a topic which is about AI and how AI will be used by industrial uh, by, by industry for industry competitiveness. We're going to address this topic in two days, so on Thursday. Uh, again, there is also some other topics related to AI that might be relevant for industry and process or for the, your digital transformation. Again, come back to us on Thursday. Um, there is those topics, uh, those topic which is inside the destination an internet of trust, which are focusing on the data aspect. So that might be relevant for you. But again, all we have addressed them already in the past webinar, or they are the, the, the transformation of industry and process is not the heart of those projects. So just be aware they do exist. Um, there is this one which is related also with what Stefano has introduced in Destination 1, so I advise you more to go towards Stefano's topic. And finally, that close the Destination 6. We're getting close to the end, but I'm going to need to ask to stick with me for five, maybe ten more minutes. I hope it's okay with you. If it's not, just write it, write it in the, in the chat. If it is, well, write it again also. That's a, uh, I'd like to see if you're still alive. But as I've been saying in my introduction, there are, there are opportunities and there is synergies with, with the entire uh, Horizon Europe. And there might be some opportunities that would be relevant for you outside the cluster four. And I want to address them now. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of some topics that I've picked up here and there in some other cluster. Uh, for example, this one in cluster one, which is about data-driven decision supports uh, for better health and care. That, uh, for, that might be interesting for you. Or this topic about material acceleration platform for batteries, where there is a call for combining AI big data. I'm in the process of making a mapping of those, of those topics. As you have understood, those are topics that are outside my juris personal jurisdictions, but since we have selected thematics for the webinar, I'm in the process of making a mapping of those topics. However, this mapping doesn't make sense as long as we have draft. Because if I communicate to you those, those topics now, and they are cancelled even later, then the mapping is, doesn't make sense for you. So we will publish this mapping once we have a better convergence of the topics. So it should be around mid-March. 
And regarding myself, uh, that's going to be the mapping will be following those webinar thematics that has been decided for the digital. So you're going to have uh, in the follow up of this webinar, you're going to receive one uh, mid March uh, a mapping of the topics all over Horizon Europe, which is, are more or less in relation with digital transformation for industry and process for your information. However, I cannot guarantee uh, the deadlines of those topics. So that might be challenging for you. If you are interested in this, just get in touch with us in advance. That can be me or my colleagues. I will, we will be happy to support you. Finally, there is also the opportunity outside Horizon Europe. And I'm going to ask you just to get aware about that. The first, the digital European programs. We are not the, or the organization in charge of it uh, inside Luxembourg, but be aware that there are some opportunity for the digital transformation uh, of industry and process there, mainly for the adoptions of HPC technologies, cybersecurity technologies, and artificial intelligence technologies. There is EuroHPC, if you want to get access to high performance computing. Uh, Luxembourg is very well in advance with that, so we'll be happy to help you. There is a new program, which is actually the continuity of Excel, which is called KDT, K Digital Technologies. This one is covering the entire value chains of embedded system. So it's very interesting for digital transformation of industry and process. The problem is that we don't have the work program yet, and we might have the draft only in March for a deadline in June for what we hear. So uh, if you are interested in that, which are more industry focuses, just get let us know, but we are not the one following these programs. Finally, there is two other programs that I want to mention, which are smart network and services. So basically this program is about 5G and 6G adoptions uh, and re innovation technologies. And the connecting European facilities, which is about uh, making network connections in Europe. Again, those are topics we are uh, programs we are not yet in charge of, or for which the draft will be only mid March. So we cannot help you, but just keep an eye on those if you are interesting. Finally, and that's going to be my last slide. Um, Horizon Europe is a new program. We are learning more or less with you what is going to be. The evaluation, it was a question, in, there was a question about the evaluations. It's not a revolution. Uh, it's kind of remains the same from Horizon 2020, but there might be some tweaks. Huh? There are some, some modifications. For example, at the moment, there is a discussion about uh, the, the maximum length of the, of the proposal will be 45 pages instead of 70. Uh, we don't know if it's going to stick, but at least it's what is currently in the, in the document. So. Our best advice for, for you to get familiar with Horizon Europe and to become very strong in submitting proposals and winning proposals is to become an expert. And the commission is calling now for experts for justly doing evaluations. We can only invite you to go on the funding and tenders portals. You have a print screen on the bottom and express your interest to become an expert toward the European commissions. You, if selected, you will be invited to, pro, to conduct evaluations. So you will be able to see just the proposals from other peoples and how the evaluation works from inside the European Commission. That will be the best school ever if you want to become an expert in, um, in Horizon Europe. That's all. That's finished our presentations. Uh, I, of course, thank you very much for staying with us. I hope you're still alive. And please, I would like to see, to see some reaction in the chat. I see that Darren, Alexandre, and Dina has react, but please write Rosa also you have. Uh, so um, please, please uh, react that you are alive. Uh, thank you for your attentions. And I think we may have, I see there are some questions going on. Stefano, you would like maybe to address? I'm, I'm discovering them. Uh, yes, uh, there's a last question from Alex. Uh, thanks, Alex, first. Thanks for all your questions so far. And um, can can we be an expert and at the same time apply for funding? Uh, yes, you can apply for funding and be an expert and register as an expert. Uh, you don't, of course, you will not be invited to judge the uh, proposals under the call you are um, you are participating in but you can evaluate other calls in the meantime. So go ahead with this. It's, 
register, there's nothing precluding you to apply for a project and register as an expert. Uh, when you register as an expert, uh, well, it's very important. When you register for an area that you want to, where you want to be an evaluator, there's uh, uh, there's a page in the in the portal in the, where you have uh, all the evaluators from the past uh, cutoff dates from the past deadlines. Have a look at that. Have a look mostly at the keywords. That's very important because how you select the keywords, select them wisely in a way that you are inside the uh, inside the list. Otherwise, you know, if you go too creative on, on keywords, it may be tricky for being selected. Uh, I think that I, I was registered before previous life. Uh, I was registered for many, many years and never, I was never called. At certain point, I did some work on the keywords and I was invited as an expert for, um, for two rounds. Uh, and that I think was very nice experience. As Jero said, it's the only way to really understand how from the generic evaluation criteria, you get at the end of the evaluation summary report with numbers. Thank you, Stefano. Um, I do not see any more questions, except if I'm, uh, if I'm, uh, if I'm, except if I'm mistaken. I see some people still writing messages. So let's see. Okay, okay, there is thanks. And contact the project officer. Yeah, well, actually, um, Ines, you might find this kind of becoming more and more difficult, actually, uh, because the commission uh, doesn't want uh, interaction, direct interaction between the project officer and the proposers. So if you contact the project officer, what the project officer will reply is basically will be uh, contact your national contact point, contact your NCP. Uh, that's sad, but that's what's happening. So. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, that's concluded our webinar. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you're still alive. Um, I Again, this was scratching the surface of the topics. Um, this was to, to give you at least at one moment an overview. You will receive the slide, of course. You will have access to the draft, of course. And what we need from you now is that if you are interested by any of the topics we have mentioned today, we need you to come back to, uh, to us so that we can discuss more about your ID, your interest, and make a better profile and customized services for you. So the ball is on your side now. Get, stay in touch for our next webinars, and we hope this uh, has at least raised some interest for you. Thank you very much, everyone. Stefano, you'd like to add something before we leave? We close? That's saying goodbye to everyone, and uh, I wish you all a very nice uh, continuation of the week. And thank you all for listening. Thank you for your for listening and thank you for sticking with us. Bye. Bye. Bye.